when we say Korea Wave, what do you think is the most popular item? K-pop music? Korean dramas? Well, think again. Recent surveys say actually it is Korean food. So we want to discuss why Korean food is so popular around the world and what we may be able to do further to make it more appealing to the world community right here in this program up front. The Korean wave, or Hallyu, has rapidly expanded to Korean traditional food, aside from K-pop as well as Korean dramas. People around the world have now paid close attention to the traditional taste of Korea. Korean food has risen as the most popular Korean wave content, even more than K-pop, which has been one of the most beloved Korean wave contents in the world. Hanshik includes traditional Korean dishes that have been also enjoyed by people in the modern society. In comparison to other countries, harmony between delicious taste, sophisticated setting, and nutritional balance based on rich ingredients that can be found in all seasons is the biggest strength of traditional Korean food. Also, the traditional fermented products, including soy sauce, kimchi, and salted seafood, which is called chotgal, have captured the tastes of people all around the world. Kimjang culture, which means the tradition of making and sharing kimchi, was inscribed on the UNESCO's Intangible Cultural Heritage List back in 2013. Bibimbap, a bowl of rice topped with assorted vegetables and meat, and bulgogi, traditional Korean barbecue beef are the most renowned Korean dishes that use traditional Korean ingredients. And they have gained a great popularity among foreigners who have experienced traditional Korean food. Along with the rise of Korean food culture like chimek, which means a combo of chicken and beer, and rising exports of Korean processed foods such as ramyeon or instant noodle, Food has become one of the rapidly rising areas of the country's export sector. The government has also promoted various projects to boost the globalization of Korean food. In April, K-Style Hub, traditional Korean cuisine cultural center, was established, and it has contributed to an active communication between Koreans and foreigners on Korean food. During the Rio 2016 Olympic Games, which have recently wrapped up, a variety of projects were promoted to introduce traditional Korean cuisine. Promotional booths and food trucks were set up to better introduce Korean food, and it has provided chances to foreign visitors to experience Korean food. Korean food as one of the most popular Korean wave contents. Upfront discusses ways to globalize the true value of Korean food overseas. Well, for what we hope to be a, a delicious discussion today, we have experts in studio, two experts. Professor Park sang mi Professor of Cultural Anthropology at Hanguk University of Foreign Studies, joining us here. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. And Dr. Kwon Dae-young, Principal Researcher and also former President of Korea Food Research Institute, joining us as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, for uh, our audience who's joining us from all around the world, I think we should start uh, with a basic questions here. I mean, when we think about Korea Wave, as I said in the opening here, a lot of people think about K-pop music and uh, Korean dramas and so on. And Korean food actually is uh, for many of us, not all of us, but for many of us, it comes as a surprise that it actually tops the list in terms of popularity. What is, Professor Park, what is your reaction to these uh, recent surveys that says Korean food is the most popular item? Well, as an anthropologist, mm. it's not as surprising as it might be, mm -hmm. might sound, mm. because food has always been at the center of our cultural and ethnic identity, because food literally becomes part of our body after we eat it. Mm -hmm. What about music and dramas? Food comes first. Actually, we cannot really mm. divide all of these, because ah. these are all 
interrelated mm -hmm. and it comes as a package of mm -hmm. Korean cultural wave. And food is something that we can always do. So we can always eat and right. experience. Right, right. And uh, Dr. Kwon, was that a surprise to you in terms of uh, you know, listing Korean food as the top item among the Korea Wave uh, products or items? I'm not so surprised because I've been anticipating the, that coming. Mm -hmm. However, bro, the timing is so quite fast mm -hmm. ahead, of, ahead of my anticipation. Mm -hmm. And Korean food will keep the number one rank as a cultural content superior mm -hmm. to K-pop or K-drama or K-beauty in terms of uniqueness mm -hmm. and history and trend tradition. Mm. So Korean food is very unique in comparison with other kinds of food, while music and uh, other forms of entertainment could be more similar to other uh, countries' products. Yes. That's, that's the way you see it. Uh, would, you, would you agree with that notion that Korean food is actually really unique? Uh, um, I would say that all these cultural or culinary traditions mm -hmm. in, in all corners of the world are unique in their own sense. Mm -hmm. But I think Korean cuisine has a lot of diversity within diversity, the, the culinary okay. yeah, mm -hmm. uh, tradition mm -hmm. because we have very uh, variegated ecological condition mm -hmm. and uh, we have uh, throughout our history we have been incorporating foreign items into mm -hmm. our cuisine. So uh, I think what we have today is mm -hmm. the product or outcome of the, the long history of you know, agonizing over what to eat, how to eat, mm -hmm. and with whom to eat. Mm -hmm. Then would you say Korean food is, is possibly, theoretically, I mean, since you talked about diversity, it, would it be something that's hard to define then, the, the characteristic or identity of Korean food because it's so, so different? I think it's very hard to define any culinary tradition mm. uh, and we really need to make some form of consensus among members of the society mm -hmm. uh, because uh, for you and for me, there are different kinds of food we consider as Korean food. How Korean or how authentic mm -hmm, any, mm -hmm. any food should be mm -hmm. to be called Korean food. I think it's something negotiable rather than something set in stone. Interesting, because when, we, uh, when foreigners think about Japanese foods, often it's seafood, sushi, and Italian food, often noodles and stuff. But Korean food, uh, when I come to think of it, uh, based on your words, indeed it might be a little bit difficult to define the identity, one single identity of Korean food. Interesting notion right there. And uh, Dr. Kwon, I'd like to ask you a question about you know, your own view about why Korean food is so popular these days. We have different characteristics of Korean food, of course, but uh, what are the, some of the factors that make Korean food popular? Yeah, the, the first thing is the, the Korean food is, the taste of Korean food is very delicious. Mm -hmm. In taste is number one, and mm -hmm. the second is the diversity. Uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Park uh, said about the diversity, mm -hmm. and the, but the diversity is depend on the Korean history. Mm -hmm. Korean food is the crystal of more than 5,000 years mm -hmm. of agricultural society. Right, right. So we have the very different diversity mm -hmm. in both of raw materials and the recipes. Mm -hmm. Chinese food can be our counterpart in terms of raw materials. I see. But the Korean food is much more diverse in the recipes. Mm, I see. So, so Korean food have so many different kinds. Yeah. Different. And uh, when uh, Dr. Kwon says tasty, that's a prob problematic word to define, isn't it? Because, I mean, <laughs> anything could be tasty in different ways. Professor Park, uh, pitch in here. Uh, how do you define the tastiness of Korean food in Korean way? How, in what way is it tasty? Well, in terms of taste, I think uh -huh. Korean food definitely has some unique characteristics. Mm -hmm. We might call it tasty, mm -hmm. some other people might call it unique or something, just uh, something of novelty. Would so you say- It's um, quite subjective, I right. would say. Would you say reliance on fermentation, like mm -hmm. bean paste, uh, and of course Korean drinks, uh, alcohol drinks, but different kinds, of, even fish, uh, you know, we often rely upon fermentation. Would you say Korean, Korean food have tendency to rely upon 
fermentation more and then makes it more I think fermentation, yeah. Fermentation attractive. is a very important component of mm -hmm. what it defines uh, Korean food. But Korean cuisine is not the only cuisine or mm -hmm. culinary tradition where fermentation is, uh, ma plays a major part. Mm -hmm. uh, however, what I think is unique, what, mm -hmm. might be, uh, what might make Korean food more delicious or mm -hmm. tasty, mm -hmm or much more complex is, uh, you know, Korea is, a, is not a big country, but uh, it's, uh, it has lots of different ecological conditions like oh. mountains, mm. valleys, mm -hmm. and seashore, uh, seashore mm. and either side, you know, any one of those seashores have different kinds of, you know, uh, you know ocean mm -hmm. products. Mm -hmm. So with this kind of internal diversity, they have been creating new dishes mm -hmm. all over the history. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what contributed to mm -hmm. make Korean cuisine much more interesting. So foreigners, when they come to Korea and then when they try Korean food, they can pick and choose all different kinds. They have so many different kind of choices here. I see. And I have to ask you uh, another question as a uh, cultural anthropologist here. Uh, people say, you know, when we talk about food, I think you have already mentioned, big part of culture actually comes in as a part of the food. What do we mean by that? Uh, they say, when we say Korean food, not only taste, but also the, the, the not only uh, nutrition, but also Korean culture actually comes in, they say. Uh, what's that idea? Can you explain that as an anthropologist? Um, I think you know food playing important part in constructing our identity. Mm -hmm. That's that's one thing. So uh, sometimes we use food as a sort of a marker of who we are. Mm -hmm. If you think of uh, different kind of diet rules operating in different religions, mm -hmm. such as whether we eat pork or not, or you know some other diet rules, mm -hmm. that's very important. The social marker. So, and uh, when we eat food, we don't simply eat food uh, because we are hungry. We choose. Mm -hmm. We have our taste and preferences. Right. And by eating certain kind of food in a particular way mm -hmm. with some particular people, we are actually representing who we are mm -hmm. and who we are not. Mm -hmm. So it is very important in sociological and cultural sense. But uh, theoretically speaking, however, if you want to make your country's food more appealing to the world, don't you have to actually make it more kind of globally appealing rather than different and unique? I you think we should think? go both directions. Mm -hmm. One is we don't have to change mm -hmm. just to please anybody, but we can make some change to, be, to make Korean food more accessible mm -hmm. if there is a very hard barrier. Mm -hmm. So that's one direction that we can go. But on the other hand, uh, we need to make some efforts uh, to harmonize Korean food with other kinds of food, such as if, if you want to make Korean cuisine an haute cuisine, mm -hmm. high cuisine, mm -hmm. we have to think about what kind of wine would go well mm -hmm. with Korean food, mm -hmm. because there are people who would like to enjoy food with wine. So I don't think uh, we should be so strict about what is Korean and what is not mm -hmm. Korean. Mm -hmm. We have to be creative, mm -hmm. I think that, because culture has always changed. That's true. Food That's changes so true. as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, Dr. Kwon, uh, Professor Park has already touched upon this question about globalizing or internationalizing mm -hmm. Korean food. Uh, from your perspective as, as an expert of Korean food, how do we define that globalization or internationalization of Korean food? What is the idea? Is it, as she said, is it keeping a balance between making it more appealing and kind of similar to uh, or appealing to the people's taste around the world, or is it keeping our tradition? How do we define that? Uh, yeah, but the globalization is mm -hmm. very difficult work for the Korean people because they don't they don't think about what what do we globalize. Mm -hmm. I see. Most right, right. people think about what do we how do we globalize? Mm -hmm. how, how can we globalize? Mm -hmm. But the, uh, in the, before globalization, mm -hmm. so we have to define the, what is the essence of Korean food. Right, right. What is the characteristic of Korean food? Mm -hmm. Somebody think about the, think about that globalization mm -hmm. says just mm -hmm. like localization. Right. But uh, without finding the essence of Korean food, mm -hmm. and we cannot keep the essence. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. after we find the key, uh, find the essence and keep the essence, right. 
without changing the essence. Mm -hmm. So localization, localization is very important. Uh -huh. But mm -hmm. sometimes some people think about the localization mm -hmm. is the best way, mm -hmm. just like the, uh, whether the, the using the, the, right. the material mm -hmm. or technology, but material can be changed and technology can be changed for so the true. localization. Right, right. But uh, we have to keep the essence of Korean food mm -hmm. and without essence, maybe localization is not our Korean food. A very important and point. We have to define our identity first. First yes, of all, we have to have yes, a solid correctly. idea of who we are yeah. before we go uh, going global. And then in that sense, I think we're yeah. still working on that part yeah. as well yeah. as other parts of the work right here. And uh, a follow-up question for Professor, uh, Dr. Kwon here, that is, they say the, around the world, the food uh, industry or food market, so it's the food industry market, what they call around the world, by like a year 2018, the size of it re will reach about six trillion US dollar. So it's a huge market. And in that sense, I think we are talking a lot about the exports and selling food overseas and so on. Uh, what, where do we stand in terms of Korea exporting our food or food item or food culture overseas? Mm. What's the big picture here? Maybe in industrial economy, mm -hmm. exporting the Korean food is more important. Mm -hmm. But, but the, the, the food, food economy is not uh, industrial economy. We have to imbe investigate the Korean food in terms of value, in terms of culture, right. in terms of health. Mm -hmm. So just, just evaluating the Korean food, food as a exporting amount, right. mm -hmm. I don't agree. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. for example, we want to export the uh, bibimbap to China. Yep. So most of government says how many, how many amounts to export mm -hmm. and how, how much money to get to earn the money from the China. Right. It's not good. Mm -hmm. So the important thing is Chinese can understand the mm -hmm. bibimbap and they like to bibimbap. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then they came to Korea right. while bibimbap is, is born or was the original bibimbap. Mm -hmm. And then they can make their bibimbap mm -hmm. with their materials right, right. or sometimes with their uh, different kinds of the method. Mm -hmm. so, so, so the important thing is how many people understand the Korean bibimbap right. or understand the, how Korean bibimbap is health mm -hmm. or history or content. That right. is the very important point. I think that's a very important point here. I think uh, in my own view, the, the way Italian food became popular is allowing all different countries around the world to their own kind of like Italian cooking. You know, I mean, New York style and all these different kinds. And in, uh, in terms of Korean food, we have seen similar aspects before, like kimchi in Japan, right? They have huge kimchi industry. Uh, they kind of like Japanified the kimchi industry right there. Uh, to what extent is it important for us to, for Koreans to have an open-mindedness about kind of like allowing the globalization or even localization elsewhere outside of Korea of Korean food in terms of developing new menus, a new fusion style kind of a new efforts and stuff. Uh, how open should we about this? I because think, you talked about uniqueness and tradition. Right? Yeah, I, I think it's, um, it's quite open uh, at the already? moment mm -hmm. uh, because uh, renowned chefs all around the world mm -hmm. are experimenting with Korean sauce mm -hmm. and um, put kimchi in various dishes mm -hmm. and they are highly creative and the outcome is quite tasty. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it will contribute to make Korean cuisine as one of the major culinary traditions in uh -huh. the world. Mm -hmm. Um, I have a really kind of uh, interesting example of localization of Korean food mm -hmm. from uh, the historical past. Uh, we had some people, some Koreans went, who went to Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico okay. towards the end of 19th century mm -hmm. as agricultural laborers. Okay. And we right. still have ethnic Koreans living there. Right. And because they couldn't get ingredients for making kimchi, uh, and th in this case, they wanted to make a kakdugi, which is using Korean radish. Radish, right. They didn't have it, 
So what did, what they did was using hikama, which is which looks like <laughs> Korean radish but with different taste. Interesting. But they use hikama to make kakdugi. I think oh, it's a okay. great example of okay. uh, localization. Okay, and that's what we need more of, I suppose, around the world. I think it helps. Uh, it shouldn't be always like that because <laughs> we should, you know, find right. roots and we should mm -hmm. be interested in authenticity and everything. Mm -hmm. But it really helps to popularize. Okay, we want to further talk about globalizing Korean food here. But right before <coughs> that, we'd like to have a short video here. We have actually visited traditional Korean cuisine culture center at K-Style Hub. And let's take a look at this and then we'll come back to our discussion of globalizing K-Food. In April, Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs and Korean Food Foundation established Korean Culinary Center in K-Style Hub, traditional Korean cuisine cultural center. It is a three-story center which offers one-stop multi-services and people can experience and buy Korean food at the same time. Kudrijoan,嗯,是,不过,比饼,吧,吃,吃,吃,吃,吃,吃,吃,吃,吃,吃,吃,吃,吃,吃,吃,吃,吃,吃,吃,吃,吃,吃,吃,吃,吃,
어, 장당극의 문화라든지 또 재래 문화가 우리나라밖에 없어요. 재래 문화. 그래서 재래 문화 이야기라든지 뭐 그런 것으로 지금 이제 어, 세계인이 사랑하는 세계 유산, 문화 유산으로 지금 이제 준비를 하고 있고요. Increasing number of foreign visitors have visited Korean Culinary Center as it has offered them chances to experience various aspects of Korean culinary culture. Globalization of Korean food is expected to be a contributing factor for the development of traditional Korean culture amid the era of creative economy. Well, Dr. Kwon, we just saw the, uh, which would, we could call the part of a Korean government's effort, right, to uh, popularize Korean food and introduce Korean food all around the world. Then, as a result of these efforts, uh, what kind of evidence do we have in terms of, I don't know, data or numeric uh, evidence that actually uh, the result have been uh, obtained or materialized as a re as a result of this effort. Do, do we have some kind of meaningful numbers that we can share? Because the mm. Korean food is mm. not industrial, not industry economy. Right. So it is right. not easy to count, Extremely the, difficult. Uh -huh. uh, count the result or outcome as mm -hmm. a quantified, right. quantified just like the uh, export. It's not like a automobiles or yeah. TVs, yeah. right? Yes. We cannot <coughs> actually count them yeah. easily. But nowadays, mm -hmm. <coughs> many people, many people, mm -hmm. foreign people, mm -hmm. want to know the, what is the Korean food. Mm -hmm. And many people asked me mm -hmm. why Korean food is the different from the, the Western style. Right. So in Korean food, is characterized just like as the papsang, mm. including pap mm -hmm. and kuk mm -hmm. and kimchi <laughs> mm -hmm. and namul and banchan. Mm -hmm. So we can. <coughs> We can change. They they don't understand mm -hmm. why the soup, the cook is right. Yeah, <coughs> on the same table. Mm -hmm. So the 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 quantification is not difficult, but qualification. Mm -hmm. They they understand the cook, mm -hmm. and they understand the rice, mm -hmm. and kimchi and banchan is the evidence for the the globalization of Korean food. Mm, right. Those are important foundation in thinking about globalizing Korean food altogether. And uh, in terms of cultural aspect, Professor Park, uh, what do we look at here, uh, and economically as well, but uh, Dr. Kwon has mentioned that we don't just look at the exports here, but uh, how, what do we see overseas? Uh, do we also look into the spread of Korean restaurants around the world? Do we see a uh, rise of uh, perhaps a chef of Korean food around the world who may not be necessarily uh, ethnic Koreans and so on. Is that what we're looking at here as well in, when we talk about globalizing Korean food? I, I think definitely the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and all of us have um, plenty of anecdotal evidence mm -hmm. of how popular Korean food mm -hmm. has become recently in terms of sales mm -hmm. of Korean food products mm -hmm. all over the world and the increase of Korean restaurants. And, and, and TV shows sometimes, right? TV cooking shows, shows on Korean and food. Uh, cooking shows on mm -hmm. Korean food. Major chefs actually right. make Korean food uh, on TV. And some uh, um, foreign celebrities. Foreign celebrities right. and in their SNS messages, right. they confess that mm -hmm. they are aficionados of Korean food. <laughs> okay. And that really make Korean food more hip and popular mm -hmm. among the general public. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can also see the sales of Korean uh, food ingredients mm -hmm. like sauce mm -hmm. in tubes right. at major supermarket chains. It used to be sold at specialty ethnic markets. That's true, right. But nowadays it's sold at mainstream mm -hmm. supermarkets. So it is much more popular right. and the ge general public has some idea of what Korean food is. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a real momentum right, right. to more globalized mm -hmm. and popularized. Korean Enough food. reason for us to talk about it in this program right here. It's, mm -hmm. it's a hot topic these days. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dr. Kwon, uh, some people, however, in Korea say we need to standardize the idea of Korean food and their names and, and menus and recipes and so on when we try to globalize Korean food. 
Do you agree with the notion about the need to standardize Korean food? Uh, or if uh, yes or no, if so, yeah. why not, whatever? Some part is yes, mm -hmm. but some part is no. To explain to us, <laughs> what sense? But uh, many people think about standardization mm -hmm. is for production of the, for mass production. Right, right, yeah. industrial age. In the industrialized. Right. <laughs> but uh, in the standard, standardization of for making kimchi uh -huh. is not acceptable okay. because if they standard the kimchi as a one, one recipe, maybe Korean kimchi is totally disappeared. So, right. so it, in, in terms of that uh, uniqueness or diversity, mm -hmm. diversity mm -hmm. I don't agree to standardization. Mm -hmm. okay. But the standardization, uh -huh. just we call it internal standardization. Right. If some have their own kimchi, mm -hmm. they should have to internal standardization to preparing the processing, preparing the kimchi, right. and sometimes to analyze the compound. Mm -hmm. So to, to maintain the same quality, maintain the same quality is very important. Mm -hmm. So with, for maintain some quality, they have to standardization ah. of their production, but not, so, not for mass production. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and maintain the quality or maintain the um, maintaining the the compound right. while maintaining the some ex, some taste standard that standard is very important mm. that is we call it internal standardization internal standardization, so internal standard right. is very important mm -hmm. but the mass standardization of, for mass production is not good for I the see. korean food i see yeah. i see and uh, professor park uh, you know i'm probably going back to one of the previous points that we have already touched upon but in this program we have dealt with so-called the k-book phenomena korean literature uh, you know getting popular around the world and we i think some of our guests have made a point that the old style 80s literature that koreans care greatly about they don't really relatively speaking don't have as much appeal to the world because of this historical cultural uniqueness that we carry on our back. Rather, these days, the new literature is getting popular because it's more common, more global, more universal, the way it approaches the people. So should we say Korean, in trying to globalize Korean food, we should try to, uh, once again, uh, reduce the unique Koreanness of it more and then make it more kind of like a universal in many ways? So what, what, what do you think? Um, like I said before, it is important to mm -hmm. customize uh, our approach towards different sectors mm -hmm. in the society. Mm -hmm. So uh, to appeal to the general public, we may have to uh, tone down mm -hmm. very unique uh, characteristics uh, or using particular animal meat mm -hmm. or any kind of spice, right. then we may have to sort of tone down. Mm -hmm. But I think there is no reason that we need to change you know, everything just to please mm -hmm. non-Koreans. Mm -hmm. Because once they taste the experiment, they will learn mm -hmm. which aspect Korean people love so much. Mm -hmm. So I think it's learning to eat new food mm -hmm. is uh, exactly a process of learning a new culture. Oh, so yes, in one direction, mm -hmm. we need to popularize, mm -hmm. we need to lower the barrier. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, I think uh, we have to offer them the opportunity, mm -hmm. Korean food and Korean culture as a whole package. I see, I see. I mean, just uh, out, out, you know, like along the side, out of curiosity, California roll, for instance, mm -hmm. right? Uh, coming from Japanese sushi, mm -hmm. uh, if we see similar thing happening to Korean food, or should it be uh, proud of it? Should, should we be concerned or what, what do you think? Um, it's maybe my, just my personal opinion, right. but mm -hmm. I would be delighted mm -hmm. if uh, people from different cultures mm -hmm. apply Korean mm -hmm. culinary skills and uh, utilize their local mm -hmm. uh, you know, plant right. or local meat to make new Korean food. Why not? That would make Korean culinary tradition even richer than uh -huh. what it is now. Okay, we see that global uh, Lizer's perspective on Korean food. Uh, we see that take right on, right there. Uh, Dr. Guan, some Koreans are talking about the idea of setting up a, uh, you know, the school, like the Golden Blue in, in France, for instance, right? Korean style, uh, you know, cooking school here in Seoul so that we can produce chefs of different nationalities who will learn Korean and go around the world and spread 
Korean cooking. Do we support that idea or do we have any concerns about that idea? Actually, that field is not my major, but <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, but, but maybe, but but uh, if we, but before teaching them, mm -hmm. we have to understand what is the Korean food. Most food, most food is only concerning the Korean diet, a Korean food, just mm -hmm. like the recipe or individual K food. But but Korean food, we call the Korean diet, is not only represented by one recipe or one food. Right. So before teaching them, mm -hmm. we have to know the, what is the philosophy of Korean food, I what see. is the essence of Korean food. Mm. Without essence or without philosophy of Korean food, mm. they maybe if they, t they teach them without that, without that, maybe it's not holds for, it's, it's not lasts for a long time. Mm -hmm. So I think the, it's not the teaching or it's she, teaching chef is not my major, but, mm. <laughs> but these days many schools open to, to, teach, the, uh, to teach the chef, but right. uh, uh, without original or without essence, mm -hmm. maybe the, they don't understand the Korean, Korean food. Mm. But they can teach, they can teach, they can, they can learn, but mm. they don't understand what is the actual essence of Korean food. Do you agree with this notion? Uh, I don't know, French style of kind of like a, a teaching proper French food, or uh, in Japan, I guess there are famous uh, cooking schools, for instance, right? Yes. Uh, do, do you agree with the idea of setting up schools here and then teaching them the Korean essence of it and then all the um, way going proper? I think such school is necessary. 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 Mm -hmm. It's not for all the chefs, mm -hmm. but if there are chefs, chefs who would like to be officially and trained in Korean culinary tradition, why not they come to Korea mm. and attend that school that becomes a very prestigious institution in teaching Korean cooking. Mm -hmm. And that can also serve as a research institute for finding old uh, traditional recipe for mm -hmm. Korean cuisine. So mm -hmm. we do have such schools already, but mm -hmm. we may um, uh, have to make it a little more global so mm -hmm. that foreigners can attend those schools and become top end, um, you know, chefs mm -hmm. in, in Korean food. So it might may be necessary. Uh, but I think at mm -hmm. the forefront, mm -hmm. forefront of uh, teaching Korean cooking mm -hmm. are the YouTube stars. There are very famous ones right, who, right. who put out their recipes yes. and they mm -hmm. show mm -hmm. how to cook. Mm -hmm. And I think they are doing great job. Mm. Uh, talking about that, Professor Park Sang-mi, uh, you've been involved in many different efforts to popularizing and globalizing Korean food and certain mm. traditions of it, of course, officially and unofficially and all that. Uh, in addition to YouTube channels, for instance, right? Would you say uh, people who are watching this program here uh, around the world, they have enough of information sources to learn about Korean food? If so, in addition to YouTube, uh, what kind of things do we have, uh, including what Korean government has, uh, might have uh, established already? Well, what do you know? What can we say about information sources? I think that uh, we instinctively nowadays mm -hmm. just type in Korean food mm -hmm. or recipe, uh -huh. Korean food, uh -huh. then I think there is uh, an abundance of uh -huh. materials available. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you uh, want to find more um, sort of an academically oriented, mm -hmm. uh, you know, research outcome right. or more official right. recipe, then you can tap in uh, some sources, more, more official sources, including mm -hmm. uh, what the government is offering. And uh, there is a Korea Food Foundation oh, and there okay. are many organizations and institutions mm -hmm. established either by the pri private sector mm -hmm. or the government. I see, Korea Food Foundation and other different sources we yes. can talk about. So talking about all these efforts to make it uh, Korean, to make Korean food more accessible to foreigners, government has been trying a lot of different things. And then there are lots of things happening on the private side as well. Uh, what is your observation in terms of proper combination of the work to be done on the government side and then work to be done on the private sector side. I mean, I think I should ask this question to both of you, but from your perspective, first of all, working in the more public side of 
the sector of food uh, industry, if you will, broadly defined. What do you see in terms of combination, in terms of rules, uh, roles? Yeah, the the combination between the the mm -hmm. uh, the between the technology, mm -hmm. sometimes uh, PR mm -hmm. on the Korean food, is very important. But actually, co food industry is not the simple technical industry. Okay. Food industry is just convergent or sometimes consilience, consilience between, mm -hmm. the, uh, between the agriculture or mm -hmm. food or mm -hmm. sometimes sometime the uh, history or yeah. sometimes culture. Mm -hmm. So right. I think the, we have to, the main obstacle mm -hmm. is to the individual person. Sometimes oh, in the, yeah, in the mm -hmm. research part, they only think about that uh, production. Right. And the, uh, the sailing part, the only production of the sailing part. Mm -hmm. And, the, and the, the government mm -hmm. or local government, they only sell their agricultural product. So we have to meet together mm -hmm. and we can communicate each other. Right. But, uh, but for the Western people, they are, their thinking is very logic and the analysis. Mm -hmm. So without mm -hmm. science, right. We can communicate each other, mm -hmm. so and then we can make some portfolio, mm -hmm. and we and we can communicate the foreign peoples with the some, uh, I mean the the real science or real fact. Absolutely. So, right. so these days, some even some some broadcast, mm -hmm. they can say right. yeah, they still they can say mm -hmm. the wrong, wrong history see, or wrong wrong not real science. Right, right. Yeah, so sure. we have to meet together mm -hmm. and to communicate each other is mm -hmm. very important. So integrated approach is right. very important right. while people right. are focusing on their own yeah. specialized fields. As a long-time right. watcher and observer of Korean food industry and Korean food culture as a whole, Professor Park Sang-mi, what do you see in terms of the uh, proper balance between the government role on one hand and the private sector role on the other? I think uh, the job of the government should be a coordinator mm -hmm. or supporter, okay. uh, right. not at the forefront. Mm -hmm. because Not uh, the planner or... They have to coordinate <laughs> the efforts driver. made by different sectors, right. including the private sector. Mm -hmm. And there is a, the, the job, something of a public nature right. that cannot be carried out by mm -hmm. the private sector, mm -hmm. such as research and development, as Dr. Kwan is engaged in. Right. Uh, so for that, the, there is a very important role to be played by government. Mm -hmm. But if uh, the government takes the leading role mm -hmm. and go to the global community, say right. that Korean people, Korean food is nutritious, good, healthy, That's what I'm always concerned. please eat yeah. it. Right, right. Um, actually, if you, you recall your childhood, mm -hmm. you don't want Parents. to be told, you right. don't want to be told <laughs> what to eat. Yeah, right, right. You should be intrigued right. to experience something new. So mm -hmm. I think that for that, you should leave it to the private sector. Government can do some coordinating work. I see, I right. see. Uh, and uh, also one follow-up question, Professor Park, is uh, they talk a lot about these days Korea food, Korean food tourism infrastructure. Mm -hmm. uh, is this something that what you have just touched upon, something that government is doing for the private sector as a supporting role? What's the idea of K-food tourism infrastructure? Uh, I think culinary tourism mm -hmm. um, is uh, one of the important trends in tourism industry as a whole. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a really good time for us to promote Korean culinary tourism because mm -hmm. Koreans are interested in this. Uh -huh. uh, visiting different regions to have the food in its uh, original locality. Mm, discovering so, our yeah. own country. That's, mm -hmm. that's one of the reasons why they travel domestically. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think it's a, they, the, the infrastructure is being made mm -hmm. to satisfy Korean needs as well. I so see. I think it, it's a great momentum to have foreign visitors for mm -hmm. that kind of experience as well. Interesting. So that can be a, a really good uh, part of Korean right. tourism and Korean food culture mm -hmm. to seek new customers and great new idea. visitors. Great idea. So, 유통이라든가 물류, 호텔, 레스토랑 또는 교육 서비스, 금융 서비스 이런 분야에 대한 국제적인 투자가 활발히 이루어지고 있고요. 
여기서 부가 가치가 많이 창출되는 추세에 있습니다. 따라서 그 식단의 고급화와 재산 평가 기관의 공정한 평가에 따른 어, 등급을 매기는 것 이런 것은 결국은 고급 관광객 유치에도 굉장히 밀접한 연관이 있다 이렇게 말씀드릴 수 있습니다. 특정한 나라의 문화나 전통 이런 생활 방식 등을 알리는 방법 중에 가장 좋은 것은 국가의 브랜드 이미지를 높여주는 거죠. 국가 브랜드 이미지를 높여주면 그 나라의 생활 관습상도 세계에 잘 알려지는 것이거든요. 그런데 사실 어, 관광객들이나 외국의 비즈니스맨들이 어떤 특정 나라를 방문할 때 가장 관심을 갖고 있는 것은 그 나라의 생활상입니다. 그런데 그 나라의 생활상이나 역사를 가장 잘 나타내고 있는 것이 음식 문화거든요. 그래서 어느 나라 사람이든 어느 특정 국가를 가게 되면 그 나라 음식을 접하게 되는데 그럼 그 나라 음식을 접할 때 일단 그 나라 이미지와 연관이 되겠죠. 따라서 그 우리나라가 이제 한식을 세계화 시키겠다는 의지를 가지고 있다면 국가 브랜드를 당연히 높여줘야지 한식의 고급화가 이루어지는 겁니다. Professor Park Sang-mi, uh, I am not a professional in talking about these efforts, right? In inscribing Korean food tradition into the UNESCO World Heritage List and so on. Uh, am I using the proper word for it? Inscribing Korean? Inscribing is the right word. Right, and the object uh, here is Korean food or hanjik? Uh, Are we using the name hanjik? Maybe hanjik some kind of Korean food, okay. not as a whole, but... Okay. Uh, Okay, and uh, w what is being done here? You have already succeeded in in this uh, inscribing uh, kimjang tradition, uh, the kimchi making tradition, into this UNESCO World Heritage List. And and what's what's this new effort? What is being done? Uh, what is it that we are trying to add to um, the list? That's what uh, we'll have to ask the Korean people mm -hmm. actually because okay. consensus among the members of the society is really important in deciding which one mm -hmm. to submit mm -hmm. to the government so that it might be possibly nominated to right. UNESCO for an inscription. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll have to see what Korean people feel that it is uh, the most uh, representative mm -hmm. uh, food related cultural element uh, in Korea. But explain to us what is the need or reason that we want to add this tradition to this UNESCO list? You have already done one so far. What's the significance of it? I mean, a lot of efforts go into it, but we need to understand as a general audience why we are doing this. Well, let me put it this way. Mm -hmm. If we have our cultural heritage right. on UNESCO's list, mm -hmm. it definitely enhances the visibility uh -huh, of the uh -huh. intangible cultural heritage. Mm -hmm. Uh, actually, uh, unlike uh, what some people might think, right. this is not a beauty contest of <laughs> cultural heritage. Okay. We are not uh, choosing something superior to others. Actually, okay. together, mm -hmm. those uh, cultural heritage on UNESCO's list right. show human cultural diversity, mm -hmm. human cultural creativity, and we are actually contributing to, to make human cultural diversity and creativity visible. I see. So it's not a beauty contest, and mm -hmm. I think it's not very desirable for mm -hmm. us to think of it as a sort of a competitive contest. I see, I see. That will not be really helpful it's a, for... It's more like a Korea yeah. making a contribution to the world community. Exactly, exactly. Oh, I see. I was so thinking about... Together, we make cultural diversity right. of the uh, Before you said it, I was thinking more about, okay, how do we beat Japanese? How do we <laughs> uh, leave behind Chinese and then get ours enlisted? That's exactly right. not what we want to do. I see. Interesting. It's like adding our own contribution to the world community. Exactly. Pool of uh, tradition and valuable heritage. Okay. And uh, I understand from June, Korea had set up a task force for this effort. And in terms of based on your own experience of uh, making uh, Kimjang tradition, uh, you know, Kimjang culture as an item uh, inscribed in the U UNESCO list, what do you think is important facts or important factors to keep in mind to make this new effort successful again? Well, the most important condition to be selected for such submission is what Koreans think of it as central in their cultural identity. Okay. So it could be ancestor worship, ceremony, food. Within the food culture. Within the food culture. Okay. Or it could be traditional 
soy sauce making mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. chili paste mm -hmm. making. So it should have um, full support right. of the community members, in this case, Korean people. Mm -hmm. uh, but in addition to that, mm -hmm. it should be representative of human cultural uh, oh, potential. Okay, so it okay. should uh, be mm -hmm. uh, you know, representative of not only Korean culture, right. but it also show uh, it should represent the human cultural potential. So together we can have uh, human cultural, mm -hmm. very rich human cultural diversity. And mm -hmm. as we need biodiversity for the whole humanity, we need cultural diversity mm -hmm. for the humanity as well. Okay. Uh, Dr. Guan, I think Professor Park Sang-mi has explained to us very well in terms of like what's necessary, what needs to be done. Uh, from a food science expert, I suppose, uh, or food uh, expert as a food item, uh, any recommendations in terms of Korea trying to make up its mind what to uh, uh, try, what to submit as an item to be inscribed? Uh, your personal suggestions? What can you say? First of all, I, I'd like to I'd like to deep thanks, mm -hmm. Professor. Park right. for for your mm -hmm. effort and uh, enthusiasm, mm -hmm. <laughs> because the if we, Korean food is registered in the UNESCO heritage, mm -hmm. maybe we can get the story, st story, mm -hmm. and sometimes we can get the brand and the and the values. Right. So that is very important. Right. Right. So for the scientists, we don't know how to get the registration. <laughs> for the enhancing the visibility yeah. of it, right? yeah. name recognition. Right. But the, the item for the registration is the, the I mean, we, with the denjang, ganjang, mm -hmm. we, we call the chang. Mm -hmm. It's a soybean bean paste, yeah, bean paste fermentation of, bean right. paste, mm -hmm. and namul mm -hmm. is very important. Seasoned vegetables. Yeah, right. yeah because mm -hmm. of the healthiness of their, healthiness of their right. product. Mm -hmm. But I have negative opinion mm -hmm. toward the memorial service food culture. Oh, I memorial, see. memorial service food, food doesn't mm -hmm. represent our authentic, authenticity. Too much Confucian? Uh, yes, yes, okay. correctly. Okay, yeah. I see. So in the literature, mm -hmm. they, they, in the, we can find the memorial, memorial service food, mm -hmm. but that is not real food in the palace not, well, not food for people enjoyed yeah. by the people. Right. I see, I see. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, okay. <laughs> that is my opinion. Mm -hmm. so, so, so Dr. Won has a clear priority <laughs> in terms of uh, full focus on uh -huh. yeah. food itself, what yeah. kind of yeah. food we're talking yeah. about, but so. not as much on the ceremonial yeah. presentation side of yeah. it. Any quick response to that? Well, I think this is the kind of voice that we would like to hear, okay. you know, which people prefer and mm -hmm. why. Mm -hmm. And we will gather those opinion and mm -hmm. we would right. reach a uh, consensus. Okay. Yeah. okay, so I guess we have just shown a good example about a consensus building in terms of presenting right. Korean food to the world stage as a possible world heritage item as well. So for that reason, I believe we will need to have this kind of discussion further sometime in the future as the efforts continues. And for now, this is what we have in terms of our discussion about explaining to our viewers who have joined from all around the world why Korean uh, food is getting popular and what more can be done in order to uh, help that effort. So I hope you have learned a lot from this program this time. And uh, as you have that experience, when we have other items and uh, discussions that matter for Korea as well as the world, we need to ask you to come back once again to our program. And until then, this has been Kim Byung-ju. Goodbye.